Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming. And uh, it's my honor to stand here today to share some of my thoughts and findings uh, in, in the digital twin. And uh, my name is Jack. I'm the first year PhD student in the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering. And uh, today I'm so glad to uh, hear so many presentation and uh, learn a lot of knowledge within the digital twin. I'm research. My research is related to the infrastructure ma infrastructure management, and uh, what what we are trying to do is to integrate the knowledge graph with the digital twin in that aspect. So today my topic is the uh, integration of knowledge graph and the digital twin to realize the full process infrastructure management. So today my uh, presentation can mainly be divided into three parts. The first one is to introduce the concept, what is the knowledge-based infrastructure infrastructure management? And uh, the second part is to introduce the architecture, the uh, architecture of fusing the knowledge graph and the digital twin. And the second, as uh, the third part, I will discuss some of the challenges in that area. First of all, let me introduce the uh, background of my research. Uh, nowadays, we, we know that infra infrastructure is almost everywhere in our lives, such as maybe the roads, the uh, railways. Uh, it not only brings us with the convenience, but also it accounts for up to 9.2% of the GDP. So we can say the infrastructure is very important. Uh, during the life cycle of the infrastructure, there are many different stages, such as the des design stage, uh, the construction stage, but what we are interested in is the uh, operation and maintenance stage. Uh, it is calculated that not spending uh, one dollar for maintenance will finally result in reconstruction costs up to three to four dollars. That's why this uh, topic is very important. Traditionally, uh, the infrastructure management is conducted by human experts or workers. And uh, obviously there are so many drawbacks such as the uh, inevitable human errors or the high labor costs. So that's why the automation and uh, the informatization is the development trend. Uh, previously, the human workers or experts uh, conduct the uh, infrastructure management by taking use of the knowledge and uh, experience summarized in the engineering documents, such as maybe the uh, codes, guidelines, standards, the industry documents. Uh, they take use of this knowledge to make the judgment what kind of what part of the infrastructure need to be maintained and how to maintain that. But nowadays we have the BIM model, which store the status information of the infrastructure. And so the knowledge-based infrastructure management is to build such a uh, specification compliance checking framework. Uh, it jointly process the information, not just from the BIM model, but also consider the uh, engineering documents to process the, to integrate the data jointly so that to obtain the maintenance strategy. And uh, in this uh, data integration model, uh, the first thing you need to do is to align the information between different kinds of uh, data source uh, to, in order to make the machine to understand uh, what specification code the beam uh, parts is uh, corresponding to. Uh, so the IFC file, which is the format of the beam model, is converted into a knowledge graph. And uh, then the specif specification code is transferred into a code query graph. And through the reasoning of the knowledge graph, uh, we can obtain the maintenance method. Uh, although uh, previously I introduced the knowledge-based infrastructure management, although it can highly improve the accuracy and the efficiency of the maintenance, but uh, that's still not enough. For the infrastructure management, two kinds of ability is needed. The first one is uh, data collection. It's just like our human eyes uh, provide with the perception ability. For example, we take use of different kinds of sensors to collect the status of the infrastructure. The other part of the ability is the decision-making ability. It's like our human's brain uh, to provide the cognition ability. 
so that we take you, for example, we take use of knowledge graph I mentioned before to uh, uh, contact the cause diagnosis to make the expert understand uh, where the damages or defects from and how to maintain that. Uh, previously, the uh, knowledge based method pay a lot of attention to the cognition ability, but it didn't pay too much enough attention to the perception uh, per perception ability. So there are some uh, issues within that. The first one is like, uh, for example, the beam model I mentioned before is static and uh, it cannot reflect the real time status of the infrastructure. So what we need to do is to find a way to integrate the life cycle spatial temporal data, not just the uh, static data, not just the static status of the infrastructure. The second one is that uh, in the complex infrastructure, infrastructure, the, there are the dependency between different components uh, and uh, that need to be considered as well. The third uh, problem is that if we don't pay enough attention to the data collection stage, uh, the, in, uh, the, 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 the decision-making accuracy will also be affected. And previously, uh, we just learned the knowledge from the industry uh, regulations. But uh, in, a life cycle period, in a life cycle period of the infrastructure, there are a lot of data and uh, can we try to learn the knowledge from the collected data, not just from the industry regulations? All these questions uh, require us to have a more comprehensive solution for the infrastructure management. So that's why the most up-to-date research trying to combine the digital twin with the knowledge, the knowledge graph. Uh, here is the architecture example. And we can see in our digital twin uh, architecture, there are different layers, such as the data acquisition layer and also the data fusion layer. And uh, the digital twin is embedded mainly in the data fusion layer to perform as the media of different formats of the data. So we could say that the knowledge graph completes the digital twin because it provided provide the digital twin with the function of integrating different formats of the data. Sorry. Uh, from another uh, perspective, uh, digital twin itself also can enhance the knowledge graph reasoning. Uh, here is the full loop of the knowledge graph reasoning process. And we can see that if we don't have the digital twin, uh, the data is mainly from the physical world but the, we all know that digital twin can have the function of providing a virtual world so that different uh, sections of the reasoning process can obtain the data, uh, not just from the physical world, but also from the virtual world. Uh, what's the meaning of that? Uh, we all know that uh, in the virtual world of the digital twin, uh, some of the most advanced algorithms can be wrong, such as maybe the uh, reinforcement learning in the artificial intelligence so that that can enhance the reasoning performance of the knowledge graph. So in one word, we could say that the combination of the knowledge graph and the digital twin can promote each other. That's why we are trying to combine them all together. So let me uh, summarize some of the uh, challenges we are, uh, we are trying to deal with. Uh, the first one is the digital twin lifecycle data fusion. Because uh, in a life cycle, a life cycle of the infrastructure, there are different kinds of data. And uh, for example, we have the data from the uh, expert or workers. We have the data sampled by different sensors, and not just from the infrastructure itself, but also maybe from the industry uh, standards. And how can we deal with so many different kinds of data and uh, integrate them all together? Uh, that's a big problem. And the different kinds of data can be uh, divided into the two main parts. The first one is the factual knowledge. It represents the truly uh, the, the real status of the infrastructure. And the second part is the regular knowledge. It represents the ideal status of the infrastructure. And what we are trying to do is to combine these different kinds of uh, information all together and to figure out the maintenance strategy. Nowadays, there are some existing uh, 
data standard to provide as a unified format, such as an IFC standard. But this kind of data format, data standard, uh, mainly focus on the representing the value or the semantics of the data, um, but ignore the association and the links within the data. And uh, maybe the um, multimodal knowledge graph could be a solution and we will explore that field later. The second challenge is the uh, decision making uh, of the digital twin. Uh, I introduced the maintenance uh, of the infrastructure before, but within the maintenance, there are can, they can be divided into three kinds of maintenance strategy, uh, reactive maintenance, uh, pre preventive maintenance, and predictive maintenance. Within that, the predictive maintenance can have the higher efficiency and can cost some uh, a lot of more money. So that's what we are trying to focus on. But the predictive maintenance also poses some uh, difficulties, such as it requires us to diagnose the uh, infrastructure to find out the cause of the defects. Also, we need to access the access the assess the state of the infrastructure and uh, to predict the trend of the uh, damages. And also, we need to find find out the uh, most uh, the find out the maintenance strategy to save more money. And uh, in order to take use of the factual knowledge and the regular knowledge to reach the optimal, uh, to reach the, to reach the, how do you say, best optimization strategy and uh, reach the optimization, uh, how to take use of the knowledge graph to perform the uh, decision making uh, is also worth researching. And uh, that's the second part what we are trying to focus on later. And for our own research, uh, Nowadays, uh, our, research, uh, our research scenario is a tunnel, and uh, we, we, we selected, uh, how do you say, in this, in this stage, I'm focusing on the automation construction of the knowledge graph, and uh, we chose the tunnel as our scenario, and uh, we selected some of the industry uh, standards and regulations, and uh, trying to take use of the natural language processing technology to build a knowledge graph automatically. And, uh, We'll have my first year confirmation review next month and hope to uh, give you guys uh, some of the more outcomes at that time. Yeah, and uh, thank you. That's the overall of the uh yeah yeah actually uh within the that's that's a very important and interesting question uh i consider that a lot actually not just uh by myself but also i saw so so many discussion online uh about taking use of the large language model into the uh, information extraction to build a knowledge graph and uh, actually i even tried by myself of taking use some of the uh language model to extract the information uh i i would say that uh in this year in this stage uh what we are trying to focus on is to extract the information from the complex uh uh regulation codes and uh, the uh, the complex the sentence structure makes the performance of the language language model uh, lower than expected and uh, but also i will when i when i finish the uh, programming i will also compare the performance of the large language model and my own own uh, own, own algorithm <laughs>